The night had been quiet, the kind of stillness that enveloped a small town once the sun set and most residents retreated indoors. Detective Marcus Ray blended into the background, dressed in his unassuming street clothes, just another face in the crowd. His steps were slow and deliberate as he made his way through the city park, eyes scanning his surroundings. To anyone watching, he appeared to be a man minding his own business, but his mind was far from idle. Beneath the surface, Marcus was on high alert, running through his plan for the night. Marcus had been working undercover for months, slowly piecing together a network of corruption within the local police force. He had a meeting arranged, one that could give him the final piece of evidence he needed to bring the operation down. Everything had to go perfectly. There was no room for error. He was so close and he couldn't afford any distractions. But as he neared the edge of the park, something happened that shattered the calm. From the corner of his eye, Marcus saw a police cruiser pull up to the park entrance. Officer Harris stepped out, his figure imposing under the streetlights. Known for his aggressive tactics, Harris had a reputation that struck fear into the locals. His eyes locked onto Marcus, and in an instant, Marcus knew that this encounter wasn't going to be a routine check. Harris was on the hunt for trouble, and tonight, Marcus was the target. Without hesitation, Harris marched over his hand resting on his belt, his gaze cold and calculating. What are you doing here? He demanded, his voice rough and confrontational. Marcus didn't even have time to respond before Harris was on him, pushing him back and asserting his authority. The night's stillness had been shattered, and Marcus found himself at the center of a confrontation he never saw coming. Officer Harris wasted no time escalating the situation. His voice was loud, accusatory, filled with the arrogance of someone who had grown accustomed to using his power unchecked. You look like you don't belong here, Harris growled, grabbing Marcus by the arm. The grip was tight, painful even, but Marcus didn't flinch. He had dealt with men like Harris before, men who thrived on intimidation, who saw every interaction as a chance to assert dominance. Marcus had been trained to remain calm under pressure, to think quickly in situations where the wrong move could get him killed. But here, in this moment, he had to tread carefully. He couldn't blow his cover. He was too close to exposing something much bigger than one corrupt officer. I'm just passing through, Marcus replied, his tone measured, trying to keep things from escalating further. But Harris wasn't interested in hearing his explanation. Harris shoved Marcus back, harder this time, sending him stumbling slightly. Passing through, huh? I've seen your type before, the officer sneered his words laced with venom. To the bystanders watching from a distance, this was just another encounter between a police officer and a suspicious-looking man. But Marcus knew the truth. This was about race, power, and control. Harris didn't know who Marcus really was, but that didn't matter. In Harris's mind, Marcus was guilty of something, and that was enough. Marcus clenched his fists, fighting the urge to push back. He could feel the eyes of the onlookers on him, could hear the murmurs from the small group that had started to gather. Harris was treating him like a criminal, and for now Marcus had no choice but to play along. But inside, he was fuming. Harris had no idea what he was doing, no idea who Marcus was or the storm that was about to be unleashed. As the seconds ticked by, the tension in the air thickened. Marcus stood tall, his muscles tight, his mind racing as he calculated his next move. Harris circled him like a predator, throwing accusations without any real cause. What do you have on you? Harris demanded, stepping closer, invading Marcus's personal space. He patted Marcus down aggressively, searching for something, anything, that could justify the escalating situation. But Marcus had made sure to travel light. There was nothing to find. The officer's frustration grew with each passing second. His hands moved with increasing force as he searched Marcus digging through his pockets and pulling out nothing but Marcus's wallet. What are you hiding? Harris barked, his voice rising. Marcus kept his face impassive, refusing to let the officer see the anger boiling beneath the surface. He knew that any sign of resistance would only fuel Harris further. And right now, Marcus couldn't afford to lose control. Bystanders were starting to gather, drawn to the scene by Harris's raised voice and aggressive stance. A few of them pulled out their phones, recording the encounter from a distance. They knew how these situations often played out, 
and no one wanted to miss the chance to capture it on camera. Marcus noticed the phones but remained still. He couldn't break his cover, not now, not with so much at stake. But the humiliation of being treated like a criminal, of being manhandled in public, was almost too much to bear. Harris wasn't satisfied with finding nothing. His pride wouldn't let him back down, not in front of a growing crowd. You think you're clever, don't you? Harris sneered, leaning in close. But I know your type. You're hiding something. Marcus stared straight ahead, refusing to rise to the bait. Every instinct told him to fight back, to put Harris in his place. But that wasn't an option, not yet. He needed to stay focused on the bigger picture. The scene was quickly drawing attention. The calm night in the park had given way to a growing sense of unease as more and more people stopped to watch the confrontation unfold. They whispered among themselves, some shaking their heads, others stepping closer to get a better view. The tension was palpable, and it seemed like everyone knew that this wasn't going to end well. Officer Harris thrived on this kind of attention. He enjoyed the power, the feeling of control over someone who couldn't fight back. One of the bystanders, a woman in her mid-thirties, was the first to step forward. What did he do? She called out, her voice filled with concern. Harris shot her a glare, his face tight with frustration. Mind your business, he snapped, dismissing her without a second thought. But the woman didn't back down. He hasn't done anything, she insisted, looking between Harris and Marcus. Her phone held up to record the entire incident. She wasn't the only one filming now. Several others had their phones out quietly recording from the sidelines. It was a scene they had seen too many times, an innocent man being harassed simply because of the color of his skin. They knew that without proof, Marcus's story might never be heard. So they stood by, capturing every word, every shove, every insult that Officer Harris threw his way. Marcus could feel their eyes on him, and though he appreciated their presence, he knew they couldn't help him right now. Harris, however, was undeterred. The crowd's growing presence only fueled his aggression. He grabbed Marcus again, this time pulling him roughly by the arm and forcing him to face the patrol car. You're coming with me, Harris growled, reaching for his handcuffs. Marcus felt a surge of panic. This was spiraling out of control. If Harris arrested him, the entire mission could be jeopardized. But he couldn't break character. He had to endure this, no matter how humiliating, until the right moment to act. Officer Harris slapped the handcuffs onto Marcus's wrists with a force that sent a wave of pain up his arms. The metallic clink echoed through the park, a sound that carried with it the weight of public humiliation. Marcus stood there, his hands bound behind his back, forced to lean against the hood of the police cruiser as Harris searched him again, more aggressively this time. Every motion was a deliberate act of degradation, a performance for the growing crowd. Now you're going to learn your place, Harris muttered, loud enough for Marcus and the bystanders to hear. The officer's tone dripped with superiority, and Marcus could feel the heat of the crowd's collective gaze. They watched with a mix of horror and disbelief as the situation escalated. The phones continued to record, capturing the look of frustration on Marcus's face, the unyielding hostility in Harris's eyes, and the sharp contrast between power and vulnerability. But Marcus remained silent, even as Harris shoved him harder against the car, forcing him to endure more rough treatment. Every fiber of Marcus's being wanted to fight back, to tear off the mask of subservience and reveal his true identity as an undercover detective. But he couldn't. He was too deep into the mission, too close to bringing down the very corruption that Harris was part of. The handcuffs bit into his wrists, a painful reminder of how powerless he had to appear. The onlookers murmured among themselves, some calling out for Harris to stop, others asking if anyone had called for backup or another officer. But Harris didn't care. This was his moment of control, and he wasn't going to let it slip away. To him, Marcus was just another target, just another man to be put in his place. Little did Harris know that the man he was humiliating would soon be the one to expose his crimes to the world. As Marcus stood with his hands cuffed behind his back, Every second felt like an eternity. The pressure building inside him was almost unbearable. He had faced dangerous criminals, infiltrated powerful gangs, and dealt with life-threatening situations. But this was different. This wasn't about survival. This was about dignity. 
The public humiliation weighed heavily on him, but what weighed more was the knowledge that, for now, he had to stay silent. His mission was too important to risk blowing his cover, but that didn't make it any easier. His thoughts raced. He was a detective, a man trained to handle stress, yet he could feel his anger simmering beneath the surface. Harris's words echoed in his mind. Every insult, every shove was a reminder of the dehumanization black men like him had faced for centuries. Marcus had seen it happen to others, had read about it in reports, but now it was his turn to endure it firsthand. He reminded himself that this moment was temporary. There was a bigger goal at play here, one that would ultimately bring justice to people like him. But each second that passed only made it harder to keep his composure. He felt the weight of the crowd's eyes on him, the bystanders whispering and filming, their concern palpable. He could hear one man say, this is too much, and another voice asking, why won't he stop? But Marcus couldn't depend on their sympathy to change anything. He was in this alone. His identity as a detective had to remain hidden, no matter how humiliating this became. Inside, Marcus fought the urge to shout, to break free of the cuffs and reveal the truth. That Harris wasn't just a corrupt cop, he was part of something much larger, something Marcus had been working for months to expose. But this wasn't the time. He had to trust that his patience and sacrifice now would pay off later. For now, he would endure, knowing that soon, it would be Harris standing in his place facing public humiliation for his own crimes. Marcus took slow, measured breaths, each one a deliberate attempt to keep his emotions in check. Every insult that left Harris's mouth, every rough shove, tested his resolve. But Marcus kept his eyes focused on the ground, blocking out the noise. He had to think about the bigger picture, about the mission, the corruption he was so close to exposing. He reminded himself that revealing his true identity now would mean letting all of that hard work go to waste. But keeping calm wasn't easy. Harris's taunts became more personal, more cutting. Think you can walk around here like you own the place, huh? The officer spat, gripping Marcus's shoulder tightly. Guys like you are always hiding something. Marcus didn't respond. He had learned long ago that silence was sometimes the most powerful weapon. But his heart pounded in his chest, and his jaw clenched as Harris continued his tirade. The crowd was growing, with more people pulling out their phones, recording every second of the ordeal. A few voices from the crowd began to grow louder, people questioning why Marcus was being treated this way. But Harris ignored them, his focus solely on asserting his power over Marcus. In Harris's mind, this was just another stop, just another man who needed to be reminded of his place. But he had no idea who Marcus really was. In the back of his mind, Marcus couldn't help but wonder how much longer he could hold out. His mission required him to remain undercover, but his dignity was being stripped away, piece by piece. His patience was wearing thin, and he could feel his anger building, threatening to boil over. But he reminded himself once again that this moment of humiliation would be temporary. The truth would come out soon enough, and when it did, Harris would regret every word he had said. Then it happened. Harris pushed too far. In a moment of pure spite, the officer leaned in close to Marcus's ear, his breath hot and foul. You're nothing, he hissed, the words sharp like knives. Just another black man with something to hide. And with that, Harris shoved Marcus harder than before, forcing him to stumble against the hood of the car. The handcuffs cut into Marcus's wrists, and the force of the shove left him dazed for a moment. That was the breaking point. Marcus could feel the surge of anger that had been simmering inside him finally rise to the surface. His vision blurred with rage as he pushed himself back up, his body tense with frustration. But he didn't lash out. He couldn't afford to. Instead, Marcus took another deep breath, centering himself, forcing the anger back down where it couldn't control him. Harris had pushed him far, but Marcus wasn't about to lose everything now. The crowd gasped audibly, and one woman stepped forward, yelling at Harris to stop. What's wrong with you? She shouted, her phone still filming. He's not even resisting. Others in the crowd echoed her sentiment, their voices growing louder and more insistent. For the first time, Harris seemed to notice the growing hostility around him. His eyes darted toward the phones pointed in his direction, the faces of the bystanders who were no longer passive observers. The mood had shifted. 
For a brief moment, Harris hesitated. He wasn't used to being challenged like this, and the crowd's reaction had caught him off guard. But his pride wouldn't let him back down. Stay out of this, he barked at the crowd, but his voice lacked the confidence it had before. He turned back to Marcus, who was still standing tall despite the physical and emotional assault. But something had changed. Harris had crossed a line, and now there was no going back. The energy in the park shifted. The murmurs from the crowd grew louder, and more people began to voice their objections. This isn't right, someone called out. Another person yelled, Why are you doing this? Phones were still raised, capturing every second, and Marcus could feel the shift in the air. The onlookers had gone from passive observers to active participants, their concern turning into outrage. The injustice they were witnessing was too blatant to ignore. A few people in the crowd started moving closer, as if preparing to intervene, but no one made a direct move yet. The tension was building, the situation teetering, on the edge of something far more explosive. Harris, sensing the growing hostility, straightened up, his jaw tight with anger and frustration. The crowd wasn't supposed to react like this. They were supposed to be silent witnesses, not challengers to his authority. He turned to face them, his face flushed with irritation. Back off, Harris shouted, his voice cracking slightly. This is a police matter. Stay out of it. But the crowd wasn't backing down. The woman who had been recording earlier stepped forward again. This man didn't do anything, she insisted, her voice steady and firm. We're all watching, and we're not going to let you get away with this. Her defiance sent a ripple through the crowd, and more people began to raise their voices, calling out Harris's behavior for what it was, an abuse of power. Marcus stood silently, watching the situation unfold. He could feel the tide turning, but he couldn't reveal the truth just yet. He was still bound by his mission, still undercover, and any wrong move now could ruin everything. But as the crowd grew more vocal, as they demanded answers and justice, Marcus couldn't help but feel a flicker of hope. The truth was coming, slowly but surely, and Harris was losing control of the situation. Marcus didn't need to act. Harris was digging his own grave. As the tension in the air reached its peak, Marcus stood quietly, the weight of his hidden identity heavy on his shoulders. He was more than just another man being humiliated by a corrupt cop. He was a detective, someone who had spent months risking everything to uncover a web of corruption within the very department Harris worked for. And now Harris was unknowingly standing on the edge of that web, about to be caught in a trap of his own making. Marcus had been sent to this small town to infiltrate a network of dirty cops, criminals, and officials who were involved in everything from drug trafficking to cover-ups. The operation had been meticulously planned, and Marcus had spent months building his cover, posing as a low-level street vendor to gather intel. The night's meeting had been his chance to gather the final piece of evidence he needed to expose the entire operation. But Harris had interrupted that plan with his baseless accusations and public humiliation. For now, Marcus had no choice but to remain silent, his true identity still hidden from everyone around him. Harris had no idea who he was dealing with, no idea that Marcus was far more than the suspicious black man he thought he had cornered. But Marcus knew that the truth couldn't stay hidden forever. Harris's arrogance, his abuse of power, and the crowd's growing unrest were pushing the situation to a boiling point. Soon, Marcus would reveal everything, but not yet. He had to wait for the right moment, the moment when all the pieces would fall into place. Harris thought he was in control, but in reality, he was teetering on the edge of a cliff. And Marcus, even bound in handcuffs, was the one holding the final piece of evidence that would send Harris and his corrupt colleagues crashing down. While Officer Harris was busy asserting his dominance, Marcus's mind was racing. He had to think fast. The meeting he was supposed to attend that night was critical. It could be the key to bringing down the entire network of corruption. The informant he was supposed to meet had valuable information, and if Marcus didn't show up, the entire operation could collapse. Every minute he spent handcuffed in public humiliation was a minute closer to losing everything he had worked so hard for. His mission wasn't just about gathering evidence, it was about timing. The meeting had been arranged with extreme caution, and any deviation from the plan could spook his contact. Marcus knew that if he missed this window of opportunity, 
the corrupt officials and officers he had been tracking would retreat into the shadows, making it impossible to find them again. He needed to find a way to get free, but he couldn't afford to break his cover yet. As Harris continued to berate Marcus, unaware of the deeper game being played, Marcus's thoughts turned to his informant, someone who was risking just as much as he was. The plan had been set in motion weeks ago, and tonight was supposed to be the final step in exposing the criminal activities of the police department. Now, with Harris's unwarranted aggression, everything was in jeopardy. Marcus had to find a way to turn the situation around, quickly. Time was slipping away. Marcus glanced at the crowd, still growing in number, their faces filled with a mix of fear and outrage. They didn't know it, but they were witnessing something far bigger than a simple abuse of power. The clock was ticking and Marcus had to figure out how to free himself from the cuffs, attend the meeting, and complete his mission without blowing his cover. The stakes had never been higher, and Marcus had never been so close to losing everything. Marcus had spent months undercover, and now the weight of his mission bore down on him. It wasn't just about Officer Harris and the public humiliation he was enduring. It was about something much bigger. Marcus had infiltrated a corrupt police network that had its hands in everything from drug trafficking to organized crime. The deeper he had dug, the more layers of corruption he uncovered. And tonight, he was supposed to gather the final piece of the puzzle. The operation was dangerous and Marcus had known the risks when he signed up. But he hadn't anticipated that a routine patrol officer, driven by arrogance and racial bias, would nearly derail everything. As Harris continued to posture, Marcus kept his mind focused on the mission. He had been working closely with internal affairs and federal agencies, building a case that would bring down not just Harris, but the higher-ups who had allowed the corruption to flourish unchecked. And the meeting he was supposed to attend that night was with a key informant, someone inside the corrupt network who was ready to flip and provide evidence. Marcus had worked carefully to build trust with this person, and now, on the night of their crucial exchange, he was stuck being humiliated in front of a growing crowd. The irony wasn't lost on him. Harris thought he was dealing with a petty criminal, but Marcus was the one playing a much larger game. As Marcus stood there, handcuffed and silent, the enormity of his mission pressed down on him. If he missed the meeting, the entire case could unravel. But more than that, he knew that the lives of countless people depended on exposing the corruption within the police force. If he failed, the network would go underground, and the cycle of injustice would continue. He had to think fast. His mission wasn't over yet, and Marcus wasn't about to let it end like this. The corruption ran deep deeper than Marcus had initially realized. It wasn't just a handful of dirty cops taking bribes or covering up crimes. This was a full-scale operation with ties to local politicians, business owners, and even high-ranking officials within the police force. Marcus had spent months gathering evidence, and each piece revealed a new layer of the criminal network that had taken root in the town. What had started as a simple investigation into drug trafficking had spiraled into something far more sinister. The operation involved drug running, money laundering, and a brutal system of intimidation to keep whistleblowers silent. Marcus had been careful, collecting small bits of information from low-level informants, but tonight's meeting was supposed to provide the smoking gun, a senior officer ready to come forward and expose the whole operation. But as he stood there, handcuffed by Officer Harris, he realized how easily the entire mission could fall apart. Harris was a cog in the larger machine, unknowingly playing his part in the system of corruption. While Harris might not have been aware of the full extent of the operation, his abuse of power fit perfectly into the culture that allowed such corruption to thrive. Marcus had seen it before. Officers like Harris who operated with impunity, knowing that the system would protect them as long as they upheld its crooked foundation. Harris thought he was untouchable, but Marcus was about to change that. The corruption Marcus was uncovering went beyond individual officers. It was systemic. It had infected the very core of the town's power structure, from the police force to the mayor's office. The stakes were enormous, and Marcus knew that his mission wasn't just about justice. It was about dismantling a machine that had been allowed to operate for far too long. But time was running out. 
he had to find a way to complete his mission before everything collapsed. What Harris didn't realize was that he wasn't just a bully on a power trip. He was part of the very conspiracy Marcus had been investigating. Harris's aggressive behavior and racial profiling weren't isolated incidents. They were part of a culture within the police department that fostered corruption and abuse of power. Harris had been involved in covering up crimes for years, and though he didn't know it, Marcus had been tracking his activities closely. Harris wasn't a mastermind, but he was complicit. He had used his badge as a weapon, terrorizing the community and enforcing the will of those higher up in the corrupt hierarchy. He had falsified reports, planted evidence, and helped protect the criminal enterprises that operated under the cover of the law. To him, tonight's confrontation with Marcus was just another routine show of force. But Marcus knew the truth. Harris was a key player in the network he was trying to bring down. As Harris continued to berate Marcus in front of the crowd, oblivious to the real danger he was in, Marcus couldn't help but feel a sense of grim satisfaction. Harris had no idea that the man he was humiliating was the same man who would soon expose him for the criminal he truly was. Marcus had gathered enough evidence to link Harris to multiple illegal activities, but tonight's meeting was supposed to provide the final piece of the puzzle, the testimony of a senior officer ready to blow the whistle on the entire operation. Harris's arrogance blinded him to the reality of the situation. He believed he was untouchable, protected by the very system that Marcus was about to dismantle. But the officer's world was about to come crashing down, and Marcus would be the one to pull the trigger. For now, Marcus had to endure the public humiliation. But he knew that soon enough, it would be Harris who would face the consequences of his actions. Marcus found himself in the precarious position of balancing his mission with his personal dignity. Every second he spent handcuffed in public was another second closer to losing everything. The longer this confrontation with Harris continued, the higher the stakes became. He was walking a tightrope, knowing that any wrong move could jeopardize not only his mission, but also his life. The crowd was growing restless, their murmurs turning into shouts of outrage, but Marcus couldn't afford to break his cover. It was a dangerous balancing act. If Marcus pushed back too hard, he risked revealing his true identity. If he let Harris continue unchecked, he risked missing his meeting and losing the vital evidence that could take down the corrupt network. His mind raced as he weighed his options. He could feel the eyes of the crowd on him, could sense the growing tension in the air. He needed to act soon, but how? The balance was fragile, and Marcus knew that one wrong step could send everything crashing down. Harris was growing bolder with each passing minute, feeding off the power he felt in humiliating Marcus. But Marcus wasn't powerless even though he appeared to be. His training, his experience, and his knowledge of the larger game being played gave him an advantage Harris couldn't see. But for now, Marcus had to play along, even as the situation spiraled out of control. The danger wasn't just in the physical confrontation, it was in the choices Marcus would have to make in the next few moments. He was caught between the immediate threat of Harris and the long-term goal of exposing the corruption. The balance was delicate, but Marcus knew that if he stayed calm, stayed focused, he could turn the situation in his favor. The question was, how much longer could he hold on? As Officer Harris continued his tirade, Marcus remained silent, knowing that his words could betray his true identity. Harris interpreted Marcus's silence as submission, a confirmation that he had won this battle of wills. But in reality, Marcus's silence was a carefully calculated move. He had learned long ago that sometimes saying nothing could be the most powerful response. The less Marcus said, the more Harris revealed about his own arrogance and abuse of power. The crowd continued to grow, and more voices began to challenge Harris. He hasn't done anything wrong, someone shouted. Why is he in cuffs? Another demanded. But Marcus held his tongue. He couldn't let his emotions get the best of him, not now. His cover was his most valuable asset and any slip-up could derail the entire operation. Even though every fiber of his being wanted to fight back, to defend his dignity, Marcus knew that the bigger victory lay ahead. As Harris continued his public humiliation, Marcus scanned the crowd discreetly. He noticed a few familiar faces, people he had seen during his undercover work. 
people who were part of the network he was trying to expose. They weren't here to help him. They were here to watch, to see if Marcus would crack under pressure. It was a reminder that this was more than just a confrontation between a cop and a man on the street. It was a chess game, and Marcus was still a few moves ahead. But the clock was ticking. Marcus knew that time was running out. If he didn't find a way to attend his meeting soon, the entire mission could fall apart. His silent endurance had bought him time, but it wouldn't last forever. He needed to act, and he needed to do it soon. Would Marcus be able to outsmart Harris and stay true to his mission? Subscribe to the channel to see how Marcus navigates this dangerous game of survival. The meeting that Marcus was on the verge of missing wasn't just any meeting. It was the culmination of months of undercover work, the moment where everything would come together. Marcus had been working with an informant who had deep ties to the criminal network operating within the police department. The informant had agreed to meet in secret and provide the names, locations, and details necessary to blow the case wide open. But as the minutes passed, Marcus knew that this meeting was slipping through his fingers. He had planned every detail of the operation meticulously, ensuring that no one would suspect his true identity. But Harris, with his baseless stop and aggressive tactics, was threatening to destroy everything. The information that Marcus needed was so close, yet so far away, and the longer Harris held him here, the more he risked losing it all. Harris, of course, had no idea that his actions were delaying the exposure of a massive corruption scandal. To him, Marcus was just another man who needed to be put in his place. But Marcus knew better. If he didn't get to that meeting soon, the informant might disappear for good. The stakes had never been higher, and Marcus was running out of options. He had to think fast, or risk losing the critical information that could take down the entire corrupt network. The urgency was building, but Marcus couldn't act recklessly. He needed a way out, a way to free himself from Harris without blowing his cover. The pressure was mounting, and Marcus knew that time was running out. Would he find a way to complete his mission, or would Harris's arrogance ruin everything? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow Marcus's journey as he tries to bring justice to light. Eventually, the confrontation began to wind down. The crowd's growing unrest had drawn the attention of other officers who arrived on the scene to de-escalate the situation. Harris, sensing that his control over the situation was slipping, reluctantly released Marcus from the handcuffs. But the damage had already been done. Marcus stood, rubbing his wrists, the sting of the cuffs a painful reminder of the humiliation he had endured. The crowd, now emboldened by the arrival of the other officers, began to speak out even more forcefully. He didn't do anything, someone yelled. This isn't justice, another voice chimed in. Harris, his face flushed with anger and embarrassment, tried to brush off the criticism, but it was clear that he had lost control of the situation. The phones were still recording, and the footage of the entire incident would soon be all over social media. Marcus, for his part, kept his expression neutral. He couldn't afford to show any sign of relief or frustration. He was still undercover, and even though the immediate threat had passed, he knew that his mission wasn't over. He had lost valuable time, and the meeting he was supposed to attend had likely already ended. But he couldn't let that stop him. There had to be another way to gather the evidence he needed he would have to regroup and find another angle to take down the corrupt network. As Marcus walked away from the scene, his mind was already working on a new plan. Harris had exposed himself as part of the problem, but there were still bigger players at work. The fight wasn't over, not by a long shot. Marcus knew that he would have to tread carefully, but he was more determined than ever to bring justice to those who had been wrong. Follow the channel for more updates on Marcus's quest for justice and how he uncovers the truth. The video of the incident spread like wildfire. Within hours, it had been shared across social media platforms, sparking outrage and calls for action. People from all walks of life weighed in, demanding that Officer Harris be held accountable for his actions. The footage was clear. Harris had overstepped his authority using excessive force and racial profiling without any justification. The public outcry was swift and unforgiving. For Marcus, the situation was both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, the public exposure of Harris's behavior brought much-needed attention to the corruption within the police department. But on the other hand, 
Marcus still needed to maintain his cover. He couldn't afford to have his identity as an undercover detective revealed, not yet. The spotlight on Harris was growing, and Marcus had to be careful not to get caught in its glare. The media began covering the story extensively, and protests were organized in the community. People gathered in front of the police station, holding signs that demanded justice and reform. The pressure on the department was mounting, and Harris's name was at the center of it all. But the corruption went deeper than Harris, and Marcus knew that the real battle was still ahead. The public might see Harris as the villain, but there were more powerful figures pulling the strings behind the scenes. Despite the growing chaos, Marcus kept a low profile. He watched as the situation unfolded, knowing that the attention on Harris could be used to his advantage. The corruption he had been investigating was about to be exposed, but Marcus needed to ensure that the right people were held accountable. Harris was just the beginning. Stay tuned and subscribe to see how Marcus navigates this complex web of corruption and public outrage. As the public outcry grew louder, the cracks in the corrupt system began to show. Officers who had once felt untouchable were now under scrutiny, their actions being questioned by both the public and higher authorities. The media had uncovered more than just Harris's misconduct. There were whispers of larger investigations into the police force, fueled by the protests and demands for transparency. The once solid wall of corruption was beginning to crumble. For Marcus, this was the moment he had been waiting for. The pressure from the public was forcing the corrupt officers and officials to make mistakes, to expose themselves in ways they hadn't before. Harris was the catalyst, but the real targets were those at the top, the officers who had allowed corruption to flourish, the ones who had profited from the criminal activities hidden within the department. Marcus knew that the time to strike was coming soon. The Internal Affairs Division had already begun investigating Harris, and rumors of more officers being involved in the corruption were circulating. Marcus, still undercover, was feeding information to the investigation, carefully maneuvering behind the scenes. The groundwork he had laid was finally paying off, and he could see the network starting to unravel. The officers who had once been so confident in their power were now scrambling to cover their tracks. But Marcus knew that they couldn't hide forever. The corruption was too deep, too widespread. The truth was coming to light, and there was nothing the guilty could do to stop it. The question now was whether Marcus could gather the final pieces of evidence needed to bring them all down. Subscribe to the channel to follow Marcus as he fights to expose the truth and bring justice to those who have been wronged. Officer Harris had always operated with an air of untouchable arrogance. He believed that his badge granted him the authority to act without consequence. For years, he had gotten away with bullying, profiling, and roughing up anyone he deemed suspicious, knowing that the system would back him up. But this time, Harris had miscalculated. The public humiliation of Marcus, captured on multiple phones, had gone viral. And now, the very thing that fueled Harris's confidence was leading to his downfall. As the days passed, the weight of the media scrutiny and public backlash began to take its toll. Harris tried to deny any wrongdoing, painting himself as a cop just doing his job. But the evidence against him was overwhelming. Internal Affairs had already opened an investigation and higher-ups in the department, eager to protect their own reputations, were distancing themselves from Harris. For the first time in his career, he was the one under the microscope. What Harris didn't realize was how deep the consequences of his arrogance would run. This wasn't just about one bad arrest or an isolated case of misconduct. Marcus's undercover mission was gathering momentum, and Harris had unknowingly thrown himself into the spotlight at the worst possible moment. The more Harris pushed to defend himself, the more people began to dig into his past, uncovering a pattern of behavior that pointed to a much larger problem. The public was demanding justice, and the pressure was mounting on the department to act. For years, Harris had operated as if he were invincible, but now he was learning that arrogance comes with a price. His actions had not only jeopardized his own career, but they had also begun to unravel the corrupt system he had been a part of for so long. And while Harris still clung to the belief that he would come out on top, Marcus knew that the end was near for him. If you want to see how the story unfolds and what happens next, 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel. With the public focused on Harris, Marcus saw the perfect opportunity to make his next move. The attention on Harris was a distraction, and while the corrupt officers and officials were scrambling to protect themselves, Marcus quietly gathered the final pieces of evidence needed to bring them down. His informant, who had been hesitant after the public incident, finally came through with the key information Marcus needed. Names, dates, and financial records that tied the top brass of the police force to criminal activities. Marcus knew that this was his moment. The web of corruption he had spent months infiltrating was about to collapse, and he needed to act quickly before anyone could cover their tracks. With the help of internal affairs, Marcus compiled the evidence into a solid case, one that would be impossible to ignore. The time for secrecy was over. It was time to bring the truth into the light. He made his move quietly, without fanfare, submitting the evidence to the proper authorities. But Marcus knew that once the investigation went public, the shockwaves would be felt throughout the entire town. The corrupt officers, including Harris, would soon find themselves in the crosshairs, and there would be no way out. Marcus had played his role perfectly, enduring public humiliation and holding his cover until the right moment to strike. The media, still focused on the viral video of Harris's misconduct, had no idea that a much larger story was about to break. Marcus remained in the shadows, letting the investigation take its course, but he knew that the truth couldn't stay hidden for long. Justice was coming, and this time, it wasn't just one officer who would pay the price. It was the entire corrupt system. Make sure to subscribe to follow the unfolding drama and see how Marcus's fight for justice brings the system crashing down. The moment the internal affairs investigation officially launched, the entire police department was thrown into disarray. What had started as a probe into Officer Harris's misconduct quickly snowballed into something much bigger. The evidence that Marcus had gathered pointed to widespread corruption, implicating not just Harris, but several high-ranking officers and local officials who had been benefiting from illegal activities for years. As internal affairs combed through the files, it became clear that this was no ordinary investigation. They were uncovering years of cover-ups, falsified reports, and secret deals that had allowed criminal enterprises to operate under the protection of the police. The scale of the corruption was staggering, and the investigation grew larger with each passing day. Officers who had once felt untouchable now found themselves in the crosshairs, their actions scrutinized and their secrets exposed. Harris, who had initially believed that he could weather the storm, was now panicking. The investigation wasn't just about his actions in the park. It was about everything he had done over the years to protect the network of corruption he was part of. Internal affairs had found evidence linking Harris to drug trafficking, money laundering, and even violent crimes that had been swept under the rug. His career, his reputation, and his freedom were all at risk. For Marcus, watching the investigation unfold was a bittersweet victory. He had done his job, bringing the corruption to light, but at great personal cost. The public still didn't know the full extent of his role in the investigation, and Marcus wasn't looking for glory. His focus had always been on one thing, justice. And now, as internal affairs continued to dig deeper, it was clear that justice was finally being served. Hit the subscribe button to follow the full story and witness how the investigation unfolds in real time. As more officers were questioned and more documents were uncovered, the web of lies that had protected the corrupt network for so long began to unravel. What had once seemed like an impenetrable system was now falling apart at the seams. Officers who had once stood by Harris and his methods were now turning on each other, desperate to save themselves. The lies they had told, the deals they had made, all of it was coming to light, and there was no way to stop it. The media was quick to pick up on the growing scandal, and soon news outlets from across the country were reporting on the corruption within the town's police department. The story had grown beyond Harris. He was just the tip of the iceberg. The public, already outraged by the video of Marcus's humiliation, was now learning that the same police force had been complicit in criminal activities for years. Protests erupted, and the demand for accountability reached a fever pitch. For Marcus, this was the moment he had been working toward. 
The system that had allowed men like Harris to thrive was finally being exposed for what it was. The officers who had abused their power, the officials who had looked the other way, they were all being brought down by the very institution they had corrupted. Internal affairs was relentless, and the walls were closing in on everyone involved. But as the web of lies unraveled, Marcus knew that there was still more work to be done. The corruption was deep-rooted, and while many of the key players had been exposed, there were still others hiding in the shadows, waiting for the dust to settle. Marcus wasn't done yet. He had to ensure that every last piece of the puzzle was uncovered, and that meant staying vigilant. Subscribe to stay updated on how Marcus's fight for justice continues to unravel the corruption. The investigation had reached its peak, and Internal Affairs was ready to present its findings to the public. But there was one final revelation that would change everything. Marcus's role in bringing down the corrupt network. For months, Marcus had worked undercover, risking his life to gather the evidence needed to expose the truth. He had endured public humiliation and kept his identity hidden, all for the sake of the mission. Now, as the investigation came to a close, it was time for Marcus to step into the spotlight. Internal Affairs, recognizing the critical role he had played, wanted to make his involvement public. Marcus, however, was hesitant. He had never sought fame or recognition. His goal had always been justice. But he knew that revealing the truth about his undercover work could inspire others to stand up against corruption, to fight for what was right, even when the odds seemed impossible. When the press conference was held, Marcus stood at the back of the room, watching as the Chief of Internal Affairs detailed the investigation's findings. Harris and several other officers had been arrested, and charges were being filed against numerous officials. The scale of the corruption was staggering, and the public was finally getting the answers they had demanded. But the final revelation came when the Chief turned to acknowledge Marcus. None of this would have been possible without the bravery and dedication of one man, the Chief announced gesturing toward Marcus. The room went silent as cameras turned toward him. Marcus stepped forward, his face calm but determined. The truth was out. He had done what needed to be done, and now there was no going back. Subscribe to the channel for more stories of justice, redemption, and the fight against corruption. The arrest of Officer Harris sent shockwaves through the town. He had been a pillar of the local police force for years, and many couldn't believe that someone with his experience and authority could be involved in such widespread corruption. But the evidence was undeniable. His world was falling apart, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. The public, once willing to trust him, now turned their backs on him as the truth of his actions came to light. Harris's arrogance, which had once served him in keeping others intimidated and silent, now became his downfall. Internal affairs had gathered overwhelming proof that he had been involved in criminal activities ranging from extortion to drug trafficking. His hand in covering up crimes and protecting others in the network was well documented. As the investigation expanded, it became clear that Harris wasn't just a participant. He had played a critical role in keeping the corrupt system afloat. For Marcus, watching Harris's downfall was a moment of bittersweet victory. The man who had publicly humiliated him and used his power to abuse others, was finally facing justice. But Marcus knew that the damage Harris had caused would take years to repair. The community's trust in the police had been shattered, and it would take more than the arrest of a few bad officers to heal the wounds. Still, seeing Harris in handcuffs, the same way he had once cuffed Marcus, brought a sense of closure. As Harris was led out of the police station, cameras flashed, reporters shouted questions, and protesters chanted for justice. Harris's face was pale, his once confident demeanor replaced by fear and desperation. His world had collapsed around him, and there was no one left to protect him. Make sure to subscribe to see more moments like this, where justice is finally served and corrupt systems are brought to their knees. The fallout from the investigation into Harris and the corrupt police force was immediate and widespread. Protests erupted across the town, with citizens demanding justice not just for Marcus, but for everyone who had been wronged by the corrupt officers. The viral video of Marcus's public humiliation had ignited a movement, one that was now impossible to ignore. People of all ages and backgrounds took to the streets, 
holding signs that read, Justice for All, and End Police Corruption. The town's leaders were forced to address the growing unrest. Public forums were held, where citizens voiced their anger and frustration with the system that had allowed Harris and his colleagues to operate with impunity for so long. Families shared stories of their own encounters with police misconduct, and the scale of the injustice became even clearer. This wasn't just about one officer. It was about an entire system that needed reform. As the protests continued, pressure mounted on the mayor and police chief to enact real changes. They promised investigations, reforms, and new policies, but the public wanted more than words. They wanted accountability. Harris was just the beginning, and the community was demanding that every officer involved in the corruption be held responsible. The movement had gained momentum, and there was no stopping it now. For Marcus, seeing the public rise up was both inspiring and humbling. His undercover work had exposed the corruption, but it was the people who were driving the change. They were refusing to stay silent, and their voices were finally being heard. Marcus had set the wheels of justice in motion, but it was the community that was pushing for lasting reform. Subscribe to follow this powerful story of community strength and the ongoing fight for justice and reform. As the investigation into the corrupt police force reached its conclusion, the consequences for those involved became clear. Several high-ranking officers were forced to resign, while others faced criminal charges. Harris, of course, was at the center of it all, but he wasn't the only one to fall. The web of corruption had touched many within the department, and now they were all facing the consequences of their actions. It was a reckoning long overdue. Internal affairs, in coordination with federal authorities, had built an airtight case against the officers and officials involved. The trials were swift, and the evidence was overwhelming. Those who had once operated with impunity, confident that they were above the law, now found themselves in court, answering for their crimes. Some tried to plead ignorance, while others attempted to shift blame, but it was too late. The truth had been exposed, and there was no escaping it. Harris, who had been so sure of his untouchable status, sat in the courtroom, his hands shackled and his eyes downcast. His arrogance was gone, replaced by the harsh reality of his situation. He had destroyed countless lives, but now his own was in ruins. The sentence handed down was severe, and Harris knew that he would spend the rest of his life paying for the choices he had made. There would be no redemption for him. For Marcus, watching the officers face justice was a moment of vindication. He had dedicated months of his life to exposing the corruption, and now the consequences were playing out in real time. The system that had once protected Harris and his colleagues was no longer in control. Justice had finally been served, and the corrupt officers were paying the price for their actions. Don't miss out. Subscribe to witness more stories where justice prevails and the truth comes to light. With the corruption exposed and the guilty officers facing the consequences, Marcus finally had a moment to breathe. The mission that had consumed his life for so long was over, and the weight of his undercover work began to lift. But the journey had taken a toll. Marcus had endured public humiliation, faced danger at every turn, and had to confront the deep-rooted injustices within the system. Now, with the truth revealed, he was left to reflect on what came next. The community saw Marcus as a hero, though he never sought that title. He had simply done what needed to be done. But now that the corrupt officers were behind bars, Marcus knew that his work wasn't over. The system itself needed to change. The reforms promised by local officials were a start, but real, lasting change would take time and continued effort. Marcus was committed to being part of that change ensuring that what happened to him and so many others would never happen again. Marcus began working with local advocacy groups, using his experience to help create new policies aimed at preventing future corruption. He spoke at public forums, sharing his story and encouraging others to speak out against injustice. His quiet determination to make things better became a beacon of hope for the community. It wasn't about taking down corrupt officers anymore. It was about building a better system for the future. For the first time in months, Marcus felt a sense of peace. The fight wasn't over, but the worst was behind him. He had exposed the truth, 
and now he was focused on helping others find their voices. His journey had been long and difficult, but it had led to something greater than himself. Subscribe to the channel to continue following Marcus's path to reform and the creation of a more just society. The truth had finally come out, and it had changed everything. The corruption that had once been hidden in the shadows was now fully exposed, and the officers who had abused their power were being held accountable. Marcus had risked everything to bring that truth to light, and in doing so, he had not only uncovered a web of criminal activity, but also sparked a movement for change. The system was flawed, but now there was hope that it could be fixed. For the community, the revelations were both shocking and empowering. They had seen firsthand how one man's bravery had led to the downfall of an entire corrupt network, and they were determined to ensure that such injustice would never happen again. The town was changing, and Marcus was at the heart of that change. His story had become a symbol of resilience, justice, and the power of standing up for what's right. As the dust settled, Marcus knew that the fight for justice was ongoing. The truth might have changed everything, but the work wasn't finished. There would always be those who tried to manipulate the system for their own gain. But now, there were people willing to push back. Marcus had helped pave the way, and others were following in his footsteps, determined to create a fairer, more transparent society. In the end, the truth was more powerful than anyone had realized. It had brought down corrupt officers, inspired a movement, and given hope to those who had lost faith in the system. Marcus had played his part, but the story wasn't just his. It belonged to everyone who believed in justice. Subscribe to the channel to follow more stories of courage, resilience, and the pursuit of truth.